You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Johnson. Oh, TV. From the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Rookie Blue After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show, it's After Buzz TV's Rookie Blue After Am I Show. Oh. <laughs> I love that the mic came on right at that moment. Bad boys. <laughs> hey everyone, Bing is for doing, and we're here doing another After Buzz TV After Show for your favorite show and ours, Rookie Blue. The episode is You Are Here, I Am Here, and my name is Tiana Hobson. And I'll let my two lovely co-hosts introduce themselves. Hey, I'm Anita Four. Hi, everyone. I'm Marissa Serpini. So, overall thoughts on... Sorry, my shoulder... I just love... Bad boys, bad boys. <laughs> um, <laughs> overall thoughts on tonight's episode? I like this episode. Honestly, it wasn't my favorite episode of the season. I, I think agree. last mm-hmm. week was probably my favorite episode. But overall, it was enjoyable. We had three nice storylines to follow this episode. But, yeah, I liked it. Yeah, I agree. It wasn't my favorite, but it was it was entertaining. It was it was a nice break after coming off an episode that was so intense last week. Right. Um, you know, mm-hmm. it was a little bit of a break. You know, guys got to have some fun out in the woods, and the crime wasn't, like, super serious, but it was still serious, and it worked out well. And speaking of mm-hmm. the crime, let's talk about this, because it's Tracy's first homicide, which yes. solo homicide. Yes. Which is kudos to her. <laughs> um, so Sean Peck have to go out for a call for a domestic disturbance, I guess. Um, husband it, it and wife. It was more like a noise complaint. A noise complaint. Yeah. yeah. Um, wife was saying that her husband was shooting at raccoons. He says he never shot anything. Um, they were just an interesting little couple. Right. And yep. then they smell skunk. They smell a skunk somewhere. <laughs> Skunky Which smell. at that point, I wasn't sure if they were doing like the, if he actually was smelling something. Or if he was like, hey, I'm going to make up a reason to have to go into this house because I think it's suspicious. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I, I, but I thought it was good on their part They that they went on a hunch. They're like, what is that? And, you know, they mm-hmm. used their, their instincts yeah. that something was Because the meter had been tampered with. Yeah. So right. there were things that led up to us. So they find a grow up which I did not know it was called a grow op. I always thought it was just called a weed house. Yeah. Um, so you learn something new every day. <laughs> um, and while they're there, they get this guy, Chuck, who we find out his name is Chuck Dolson. Mm-hmm. Um, he s- claims he was just there to buy some weed, but they still have to take him in. Andy, or not Andy, I'm sorry, Swarek is really kind of agitated and not really taking any of his crap. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. From the start, he just was not having a good day. I'd yeah. say, poor Sam. No, oh, but we also heard it was the end of, the, of his shift, and he didn't want to deal with a, someone who was high as a kite. I yeah. can understand that. Yeah, be yeah, like, ugh, oh, really. <laughs> yeah. It's like, come on, I'm ready to go home, and I got to deal with you now. Yeah, after. I would have done the same. Thing. I would not have. <laughs> and it's like the shift before his weekend. He wanted yeah. to go to yeah. the casinos. Who can blame him, really? Right. That's exactly. Um, so while they're in the house clearing out all the plants, they find was his whole body stuffed in that drum? Because I thought it was I thought, I thought he'd at been first chopped he got chopped. Me too. Me I, too. But then they kept saying, you know, it must have been hard getting that body in that drum. And was it like a drum like a drummer's drum? Or no, one of those big containers that you, oh, know, they you can fill with water. Like one of those like stuff. bucket type things, you know, you oh, see sometimes on the side okay, of the road. Yeah. That's what I thought it was, but I guess I didn't know the name of it. I would have called it a large bucket. Right. Because I'm a simple person here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> these fancy words over here just don't make sense to me. Or <laughs> not like I, I figured the whole body was in that big container because we didn't see any blood in the mm-hmm. mention mm-hmm. that because if it was chopped in half we would have saw a lot more blood. So I just assumed the whole body was there. Okay. Well they find this body that it turns out it's the body of Ivan Gertner. Um they're questioning Chuck. He doesn't really, he claims not to know much. He's also still high as a kite. Um, he was right. very enjoyable. I, I He's liked actually him. Gregory Smith's brother in real life. Oh. Yeah. 
the uh, more you know. I, I can kind of see the resemblance. Yeah, there. now yeah. I can. Now I see the resemblance there. <laughs> a little bit. It's kind of sad that they didn't get to do any scenes together. I know. That would have been yeah. fun. Because I know we had talked about how his brother was going to be in an upcoming episode. Right. I didn't know this and was it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Keeping cool. it in the family. Um, so Chuck claims to not know much about this guy. His name's Ivan something. He just buys his weed off of him. And, you know, he seems like a pretty cool guy and blah 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 um chuck's character was just f funny to me because the whole time he's sitting there and at one point i did kind of feel like we were getting played mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but he did a good job covering it throughout because he played the stone guy very or a stoned person very well maybe he yeah. had some experimenting <laughs> <laughs> i thought he was believable as someone who was Hi. Yeah. yeah. His, in his story about, you know, not knowing much and just being the guy there to buy some weed, it, mm -hmm. yeah. it's a believable story. Um, so Tracy's all excited about, you know, this being her first homicide. And then here comes Steve Peck, who's already mad at her a little bit. Because, I love him. Can we I just know. say how much I love him? <laughs> uh, he's, he's so, so cute. Sweet. I know. He's so nice to her. Return his calls. I know. Pick up the phone. I know it's still a little soon, but. No. I, th I think Tracy needs to put herself back out. Yeah. It's time. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone else is, you know. It's time for her to get a little loving. Exactly. Um, so he... It already being kind of mad at her comes and takes over her case because there's guns and gangs because they think the Portuguese are involved in this which leaves her and Chloe to kind of work on this on their own on the side which I thought it was great how they incorporated Chloe and her whole storyline with mm -hmm. um, how everyone at this division kind of thinks she's a joke and doesn't take her seriously even with the littlest things like different nicknames for marijuana you know <laughs> Giggle stick. Giggle stick. <laughs> and that one threw me too. I, I've never heard it called. It sounds like something maybe my grandma would have called it back in her day or something. Oh, yeah, he's on that giggle stick. <laughs> but if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. It does. Yeah, it does make sense. Because it makes you it's laugh a, stick a lot. That makes so, I've heard. so I've heard it makes you laugh a lot. I wouldn't know anything about that. Um, <laughs> That's what they all say. <laughs> um, so Chloe ends up coming in pretty clutch. You know, she's kind of a silent helper. Everyone kind of not really ever directing their questions to her. Even when they, even when she comes to them, it's like, hey, the prince on the bullet, Gil Abrino, they take off to go arrest him and leave her just behind. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, Chloe, like, just go with them. I know. Yeah, and I liked how Chloe points that out, too. She's like, yeah. no, I'm being underestimated here, and that's not fair. Even though I'm the new one, you guys should always choose treat me with the same respect and realize that I do have good qualities. That's why I got hired here. Mm -hmm. and that she, I mean, cause even in the beginning of the episode, she's down in booking. Yeah. Um, she's yeah. like, yeah, Frank clearly sees, you know, my value here. Mm -hmm. And I mean, Oliver's mm -hmm. like, at least you're not being like a favorite or anything, but she does have merits that have earned her this position. So she should be treated as an equal. And, I mean, she comes in big when they bring in Gil, and Tracy's like, we're going to need an interpreter quick, and turns back around and is like, why are you still standing here? Yeah. The way she was being treated reminded me of, like, interns, interns. At, at a big yeah. company. Like, intern, what are you doing? Why are you still standing here? Go Leave. get my coffee. <laughs> yeah, that would that, that would have pissed me off. That actually pissed me off when yeah. I saw, like, her say that. I'm like, come on. I was like, Tracy, you're better than that. Yeah, mm -hmm. come on. Tracy, I, I, I... I love Chloe, and I like the way she sticks up for herself. Yeah, and then yeah. I like how she just answers her in Portuguese. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, she actually speaks Portuguese in real life. I was that was gonna be my next statement. Her she parents must, are Portuguese. Okay. I was like she must speak it because mm -hmm. there's no way that, you know, with what, like a week to prep, you can sound <laughs> that much. I've never heard Portuguese spoken in my life, but that sounded very authentic <laughs> to me. And I, I kinda liked how they like, you know, our uh, life imitates art because if they known she has she actually speaks Portuguese, they probably wrote it into an episode yeah. mm -hmm. just to showcase that talent of hers but i liked how that um how she interpreted it mm -hmm. and, and she and she used that talent but um portuguese is actually really close to spanish yeah it's very it close to spanish i did hear a lot of familiar words i mean there are uh, obviously some words are different but like phonetically when you read it out it sounds a lot like spanish 
it did sound a lot like Spanish. I was like, oh, okay, un poco, I got that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picking up what you're throwing down, Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> and I liked the bit um, when she was questioning him. She didn't even involve Tracy at all. Yeah. She was yep. you know, like, you know what, I'm going to prove to you, Beezies, that I got <laughs> this on lock and I can handle it. And she just questions him and then gets up and is like walking away and she's wait what happened and how she turned it on him to get him to start speaking English that was genius because yeah. I was sitting there like oh man like, he really only speaks Portuguese how are they going to get any answers mm-hmm. out of him yeah um so and they found out if she he slipped and used an English expression yeah I yeah. thought it was going to be something else like oh uh, um his accent sounded yeah. wrong or like he's really American who's posing in mm-hmm. a fake accent and whatnot what was it? But like I the, thought that was smart how they do that. The dog barks up You're the wrong barking tree. Barking up the wrong or something tree. Like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Barking up the wrong and tree. And in Portuguese, barking it doesn't involve dogs. a dog dogs or a tree. Or a tree. <laughs> <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder what their statement is. Yeah, I wonder if we can Google that. <laughs> Let's see. If uh, you know, let us know. <laughs> yeah, if you know, let us know definitely because I'd love to hear that expression and its meaning. Mm-hmm. Um, and, oh gosh. Oh, okay. So then Chloe. Clearly, um, he tells them, Gil tells them, that he was supposed to, he was supposed to call um, this number after he went to the grow house because he got a call from his boss saying, we're taking over the Euclid house and you got to go take, take, a, take care of Ivan. Mm-hmm. I felt bad for Gil because he did seem like a very nice man. He was like, hey, I have a family, I have a wife mm-hmm. and a child. If I rat them out, they're all going to be dead. So... I did kind of feel for him, and the fact that he didn't go through with killing him made me think that he was a good drug dealer, and maybe there's a chance <laughs> for him to change his life around. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. I think it goes to show that, you know, don't judge a book by its cover. Even if he looks and acts suspicious, you know, he might mm-hmm. not end up actually being the person that you need. Yes. Um, so he freaked out and dropped his gun, so they then get the number from him, which another brilliant plan by Chloe. Chloe's mm-hmm. having a lot of great ideas tonight. Um, they call the number. No one answers, but this is at the same time that Nick is walking mm-hmm. with Chuck's phone to go release Chuck. And yep. I think it was right before this happened when he was talking to him in there and he was eating the granola bar. I, I turned and I was like, I kind of feel like Chuck's the killer. <laughs> I, yeah, I, <laughs> I, I was like, yes. And that's when you said, don't ever eat yeah, or yeah, drink okay. anything in so a So this is what my mom told me all while growing up. <laughs> my mother has life lessons for days. Um, never, if you're with the police, which you shouldn't be in the first place, don't take their food, don't drink their water if they offer you any don't even like put your hands down on their table because they will lift fingerprints your dna from the cup anything they can do she was like unless you're walking out of there holding all of that stuff with you and you've wiped down the table don't do it because you never know how it could come back to bite you in the ass you hear that kids hear that kids so life lesson life lessons (laughs) from tiana's mom (laughs) thank you (laughs) And, and while he was eating it too um even though he wasn't really a suspect at the time but in my mind i was thinking like you shouldn't be. You shouldn't take the food that they offer you because yeah. your DNA and fingerprints are going to be all over that man. Um, and and d- don't they say in studies that like if you're getting interrogated and they offer you food and you eat it, you actually are guilty. Like oh. m- most times, like the the people who actually turn mm-hmm. out to be guilty actually mm-hmm. do end up eating whatever is offered to them. Well, I just know if I ever yeah. end up in one of those rooms, the first words out of my mouth are "lawyer." Yeah. Just I need a lawyer. Before, yeah. <laughs> like guilty or innocent, I'm saying I need a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> and I think he was maybe he was really high, and he was mm-hmm. you know banking on mm-hmm. him just being high that people weren't going to take him seriously and just let him go. Yeah, and then it wore off after a while. <laughs> <laughs> it wore off after a while. That ended up kicking him. Yeah, he was trying to he was <laughs> speed walking out of there because he could tell they were yeah. close to figuring Getting something him. out, and luckily just in the nick of time phone rings and it's the right phone so we figured out that him and Ivan were actually friends and business partners he actually gave Ivan the money for the house and then he brought in the Portuguese Ivan didn't want that and so he decided to off his own friend over some drugs and some money I mean Mm -hmm. it's a lot of money yeah when you think about it but it's also dangerous is your life really worth it because at any point the Portuguese could turn on you yeah Mm -hmm. and you're the next Ivan. 
I, th I think it's just interesting because didn't they say that the body was shot from behind? Mm -hmm. And they mentioned the line that you you weren't your true friend. Or yeah, like, the Oscar wasn't Wilde, true friend. you know, yeah. you stab your friends in the front. Yeah, you, you, you stab, stab your, your friends, friends in the front. In the front. Yeah. yeah. But it goes to show that they weren't great friends either, so he shot him in from behind. Mm -hmm. There's a lot about friendship tonight because, yeah. you know, you have Andy and Gail and their friendship. Um, kind of at a crossroads yeah, right now too. <laughs> yeah, <it is. laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, because I think uh, a lot of friendships were tested. Yeah, it, the episode. whole theme of tonight was really friendships and yeah, where people in the end. Yeah. yeah, I mean, some people it worked out nicely for them. Other people, it not so not so good. <laughs> Um, before we get into that, we want to take a chance to let you guys know about Serial Buddies. You can find it on SerialBuddies.com. It's produced by Kevin Undergaro and Maria Menunos, our producers here at AfterBuzz. Um, it's got an all-star cast, uh, Beth Bears, Maria Menunos, Christopher Lloyd, Christopher McDonald, Artie Lang, um, the, Kathy Lee Gifford, the list goes on and on. It's a hilarious film, and... Please go online and download it right now. The proceeds and everything, it helps support us here at AfterBuzz. We bring you so much content, um, and we don't ask much of you. So if you could please support us in that way, we'll love you forever and blow you kisses. <laughs> like that. Um, and thank oh. you for everyone on iTunes downloading, rating, and commenting. And also on YouTube, there we get a lot of good predictions. We do read them all. Yeah, we try mm -hmm. to respond to as many as we can throughout the week, too. Yeah. yeah. I love reading. I know. It's like They're the best fun. part of my Fridays. I wake up like, ooh, what do people think? Yeah. <laughs> yep. And back into um, Andy and Gail. So Andy has decided after her and Nick have been apparently having more than just that one night together that they need to tell Gail and that she should be the one because Gail is her friend. Right. Um, when she said this, I mean, this kind of jumps ahead a little bit, but it brought to my mind, were they ever really friends or were they friends through like circumstances and a job i think they were friends through circumstances and a job i don't think they've mm -hmm. ever were really friend friends yeah i think they they you know they met because of their jobs mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then throughout the seasons we see their friendship kind of grow and whatnot but it's mostly just on acquaintances and their career they have the same career but, exactly i'm like tracy yeah. and andy they're friends Gail and Andy right. are more like work friends, which mm -hmm. still friendship there. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> <laughs> so Andy first tries to tell her about this while they're both pouring tea. Um, and that was just awkward because more tea. More tea. Um, she's like, oh, yeah, you keep take creaming your tea. That's funny. And Gail's like, that's hysterical. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and her face was just so, it's like, yes, Gail, yep. get her back. I. I mean, from that point, Gail, right. Gail has known what's coming yeah. because she's been suspicious for so long yeah. mm -hmm. about it. So I thought that encounter was pretty funny. And then they're removing the plants out of the grow house or the grow op, as they call it. And right as Andy's about to tell her, Gail breaks out in this rash. Well, when Gail picks up the box, you can hear something leaking. Yeah. And, oh, and then she was like, well, oh, what is that? And then like five seconds later, we see that she poured industrial yeah. cleaner on her wrist yeah. well it spilled onto her wrist oh, okay i didn't hear the leaking i was just like where where did it where did the liquid oh, oh, come I, from i heard it when she picked it up like okay. something like and you can see gail actually struggling mm -hmm. when she's picking it up interesting hmm. so she breaks out in this really bad rash and it was like has burn to, or something yeah it was yeah, like burn. a burn yeah and like burned her cleaning arm. yeah that's no it, joke. No, it's, <laughs> some of it's serious. And like I, I, I used to work in a place where we use industrial cleaning. It's, it can be really dangerous. Oh, yeah, hmm, you have to be a certain age to use it. Oh, usually. That's interesting. You learn new things every day. Yeah, yeah, we're just learning left and right tonight. No. <laughs> um, Andy takes her to the hospital, where probably my favorite scene of the whole episode happens with Gail. Completely high on Oxycontin. Yeah. <laughs> at first, I, I was just thinking, because she's like, oh, all serious. I want to know what you were trying to tell me back at the grow op. And then it goes into, is that an elephant? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give it to me. <laughs> she was so fast. And I was like, it was so much fun to see Gail relax. Be a little bit and loose. And loose and, and fun. Yeah. I love the symbolism of the elephant, though. Like, trying yeah. to address the elephant, in, elephant the in the room. 
That was perfect. That was, that was genius. Awesome. And it was a pink elephant at that. Yeah. With a little dress on. Yeah, with a little dress. Yeah, so it's even more awkward it. that there's a pink elephant with a dress on in the room. Yeah. <laughs> Gail singing. That was yeah. fun. That was fun to watch. Gail got to have a little fun tonight. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Which is it's nice. Nice to see Gail having, you know, just kind of loose. She lets her guard down, even though it wasn't mm-hmm. mm-hmm. against, you know, her own will. But it's nice to see that, especially in the last few episodes, she's so cold because she knows everything that's going on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it, it was a nice refresher. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's nice to see her loosen up a little bit and have fun. And have fun. <laughs> Maybe yeah. she should be on that more yeah. often. <laughs> Just take Oxy and go yeah. on shift. It's no big. <laughs> Cops can do that. No, they can't. <laughs> no, they can't. No, they, no can. they can't. I don't want anyone to think I said that was okay. Um, so Andy finally gets to it and we go from seeing Gail fun and relaxed and goofing off to her actually crying because Andy's been saying this whole time show me your emotion tell me you know one way or the other are you over Nick are you okay with this do we have your blessing all these things and to see her actually cry in front of Andy really shows how vulnerable she is in this situation because I kind of felt like okay maybe she is you know, over it. She's so pissed off that Mm -hmm. she's moved on. Mm -hmm. But we get to see that she actually is hurt by this and still dealing with it in her own way. And it's it's sad because Gail, throughout the seasons, you know, she says here and there that she doesn't really have friends and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And when she thought that Andy was her friend and to find out that Andy did this to her, breaking their whole girl code, she realized that she's not a friend either. So that's Mm -hmm. just one, another person that's not Gail's friend. So I, I feel for her. I feel for her to a certain extent, Mm -hmm. only because I can see where she's coming from as, like, you know, the girl code and stuff like that. I would never do that to, you know, any of my friends or vice versa. But at the same time, she is the one that cheated on Nick. Yes. Which led Mm -hmm. to the breakup. And it's like karma. What goes around comes around. Which led to her making Nick come clean. Yes. Like, realize his feelings for Andy. She helped set this all in motion because they were both living in the dark on Mm -hmm. all their feelings. And she brought them to the light. Yeah. Which was nice of her to do for them, but it ends up hurting her. Mm -hmm. And then Gail, and of course, she's the kind of person who would do this. She would make it... and kind of turn it on Mm -hmm. Andy and being like no you're the bad guy Mm -hmm. you're the one that did this that hurts yeah yeah but it makes it all the more real because it's so true yeah because Andy is the one who usually is you know the moral high ground and Mm -hmm. the one who's not stepping on too many toes at least her girlfriend's toes and then she's the one who's now dating her friend's ex right I've been in similar situations where mm, friends have liked the same guy or one started dating luckily they worked out all their issues because it didn't end badly but it's always a rough situation because at the same time the argument is you can't help who you fall for sometimes Mm -hmm. and sometimes your friend just has to be they need a minute to step away and process what's happened and then they can come back and be happy for you because ultimately if you're real friends you want the other person to be happy and if your ex happens to be the one who makes them happy, then he wasn't making you happy. That's why he's your ex. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So maybe it's time for everyone to move on. Mm, yeah. But right now it's sensitive. Yeah, right it's now it's very sensitive. sensitive. And I liked how her little, her, how her new friend was there. Yeah. <laughs> Holly. <laughs> Holly was there Holly. to pick her up. So mm-hmm. it'll be interesting to see how they, um, the relationship. the relationship, because, you know, first thing Andy does is go and kiss Nick in the parking lot yeah. at their job and it's like I just need to make sure it was worth it and so far so good <laughs> <laughs> it was worth it girl I think that was kind of yes she did it for herself but again that was a little bit selfish just to make herself feel better mm-hmm. even though she, she did something really bad to Gail she's still in it for herself be like no nope, I, I got the man whatever it was a little either way they're both wrong yeah, there's an argument for both sides yeah, of the yeah. situation. Yeah, so it's like you and, can... But I think Andy... I'm on Team Andy right now. I love Gail, but um, 
Andy and Nick are just so hot together. No, that, and they are, but I just feel for Gail. Yeah, too. I feel bad for Gail. Because like, I don't think any girl wants to be in that position. Yeah, no one wants they to be in feel, that position. You guys feel bad, I don't. <laughs> I don't. I'm sorry. I don't. I mean, no, she, because no. the way, like, I get what you're saying and, like, where you guys coming from, but at the same time, she's the one who started all of this to begin with. So it's like, you know. And when she said, I know to Andy, I want to know when she thinks something happened because I still think that she believes something happened while they were undercover. And for me, for some reason, I really want it to be made clear to her that this did not start until after they broke up because I need her to really feel bad about cheating on Nick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I just, I need them to clarify that to her just so that she can start seeing her own guilt in this and it's not all on Andy. Mm -hmm. yeah, just my two true. cents. Okay. Let's talk about the boys. <laughs> <laughs> the boys were having yeah. their friendship moments, yes. too. Yes. We've got um, Epstein and Diaz, buddy buddy, and then we've got um, Swarek and Oliver, and yeah. Shaw, I should say, since I said his last name, too. Um, <sighs> so they all go up to Shaw's new cabin that he bought because... And he bought it because him and Celery, celery <laughs> were going to buy witch crystals or something. She was going to cleanse a house. Oh, she was going to cleanse, gonna cleanse a, house. a place. And they go, and I guess they must have run into. They saw this place. Happened to cross by it. And he just knew. I mean, you know, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he hasn't had that feeling in a while. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I thought it was, it was kind of cool to see, you know, the training officers with their rookies again the training officers still treating their rookies like rookies because mm -hmm. even when he was like oh we'll get some rookies to yeah. go out to the cabin yeah. and paint for us and he was like hey rookies what are you doing come with us and in my mind i guess because it's been four seasons I'm like, are they still rookies mm -hmm. i mean mm -hmm. how I long are you a so. rookie for i know like the show's called rookie blue like but i feel like at some point they should start training their yeah. own rookies and have a you know have that kind That's of true. be yeah. it and they should not be treated like rookies anymore right kind of like true. what Grey's Anatomy does yeah with, you know like, like the exact same thing <laughs> they were interns they, they were and then interns, they graduated they moved to residence and then got their own interns yeah so we need this to see the them. same thing with rookie because I understand <laughs> what um, <laughs> I don't watch Grey's Anatomy so I'm still, I'm still on the I got same that. page um, <laughs> Because I totally understand what Epstein and Diaz were talking about, how they're being treated like crap right now. You know, mm -hmm. Diaz, it's his first day back, and he's at the desk, and he's like, hey, I went off to where do you, Timmins, Timmins, and I wasn't treated like a rookie. No one saw me as a rookie. I didn't think I was a rookie, so I had the confidence that backed it up, and I come back here, and everyone has me back at the bottom of the barrel. And it's hard to go from, you know, being the head man in the class to being the, you know, lonely and, scrub. I mean, and he was technically the complete opposite at Timmins because he was married mm -hmm. and not a rookie, and here he's single and working booking. So, yeah, I can see why he was upset, mm -hmm. but get over it, dude. You're yeah. back. <laughs> yeah, you're back. Be happy. You found out that baby was not Joe's. Yes. I'm just happy, happy that we can't, we don't have to hear my son anymore. Oh, I know. Gosh. Like, I'm married. Or, the, or something like that. But right. I also hurt. kind of hope that he does keep some sort of relationship with Christian mm -hmm. because he was in his life for so long that I hope that he does, like, go get Christian and have him for the weekend or something. Maybe they lose him again or he runs away or something like that and he can still be involved in the child's life. That's just me being sentimental. Um, but Dove is trying to, you know, cheer him up, and right. Dove is such a commanding force that he just kind of is like, oh, you want to just stay at home tonight and find apartments. No, I'm taking you to the penny. No, we're doing this now. We're bringing mm -hmm. beers. And yeah. he's very demanding. So when they were lost in the woods together and they have their big kind of blow up, they both brought up good points, of, like characteristic traits about, the, about each other. Mm -hmm. But as mm -hmm. they were saying it, I realized that that's why they work so well because they are a little bit the opposite and they be, both can teach the other one a little bit about it you know dove can teach him how to be more assertive and like hey this is what i want to do and he can teach dove how to um you know <laughs> pump the brakes every now and then and be yeah. nicer and i like how dove and diaz can do this because they're they are good friends and they are like ollie and i'm um, gonna yeah ollie and sam are the older versions of dove mm -hmm. and diaz 
Oh wow, I didn't even yeah. think about yeah. that. I didn't think about that either. <laughs> these, these two juxt juxtapositions of, of these two relationships is the exact same thing. I was like, this is gonna be them in like fifteen plus years. Yeah, working the force together. Yep. One of them still detective. still arguing still each arguing. other, <laughs> working and pointing out their flaws. Probably. But, but at the end of the day, they still have each other's yeah. backs and understand each other. And I loved how um, Shaw was able to break Swarak down at the end of the day. You know, he's like. I know something's bothering him, but he's not going to come out and tell me, so I have mm -hmm. to do, like, the psychology trick right. of, like, talking Reverse around. Reverse psychology. Yeah, yeah, you know, talk around it to be like, oh, yeah, so, you know, you know when you look at me, but kind of like with you and Andy. And he's like, yeah. I was so I was like, excited. Ah! I was like, yes, finally. And then this is me probably going to get, like, backlash from this, but it's, I'm totally team McSwarick. I'm like so for Andy and Sam to get back together. You have no idea. I think you're only saying that because you want Nick for well, yourself. Well, that's that too. But no. <laughs> you want Peter for yourself, so you're trying to break him up with this fictional girlfriend on the show. No, but I always like no, but I always I've always liked Sam and Andy together. Yeah. I think that Nick and Andy are cute. I really do, but like I said, I don't think it's gonna be in for the long haul. Because I think like mm -hmm. Shaw said that Andy and Sam belong together. They are. No, I like Andy and Sam together. They are cute. But I think as of right now, it's fun to watch Nick and Andy. Yeah, Nick and a Nick are Andy needs Nick right now mm -hmm. um, just to kind of, you know, come back into the Sam situation and be a different person because they both need to come back in. They're not going to get too many more chances to be together. So when mm -hmm. they come back together, they both have to be ready for it and be in it for the long haul. And now Sam can be jealous of. Yeah. Love triangle, and like exactly. we like yeah. we said. So, um, but I think it was good of Ollie to point out that Marlo probably knows this too. Mm -hmm. If if Sam's having this inner conflict within himself, mm -hmm. Marlo's gonna point it out too. It's a very good point, but she's too busy stalking people. Yeah. To really care <laughs> right now. <laughs> Poor baby. <laughs> Poor thing. Let's uh, <laughs> talk about our news and gossip. After Buzz TV. <laughs> oh. Hello. Hello, sexy voice. After Buzz TV News. Late night After Buzz right there. After Buzz TV News. Hey. hey. This is Love Live. Oh, wrong show. Okay. Wrong podcast. The love Line with Ricky Blue. <laughs> At least we got our explosion this week. Okay. <laughs> so, Eric Johnson, as we all know, plays Luke Callahan in the show. He has a new hospital drama, Steven Soderbergh's hospital drama. It's that's titled The Nick. Um, it's a new medical series, and it has uh, Clive o Owen. Oh. That it stars Clive Owen and Johnson will play a medic in, in that show, which will be uh, medics nice are to hot see. in shows. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Real, life, Real life too. Excellent. Excellent. Most of them are. They, yeah. they said although that Johnson is in this new series, it won't really affect his character on Rookie Blue because he, Eric, we'll see Luke back in the final three episodes okay. of Rookie Blue this season, starting August 29th, 2013, and. Uh, and Ricky Blue will continue filming uh, season five. They'll start production of season five in January. January. Oh, January nice. 2004. So yeah, and he said that this whole thing is a great learning, great tremendous learning experience. And then I also so good for him. Good, yeah, good, good for yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait to see it. You know, it sounds yeah, really. That, that should be interesting. It's on Cinemax, and, right? Yes, yeah, Cinemax. Cinemax. Ooh, so it's gonna be like scandalous. Cinemax. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be like be racy. Interesting. And yeah. Clive, Clive Owen is a great yeah. actor as well. And then I also have our ratings from last week of Rookie Blue. Um, last week's episode aired August 16th. Sorry, I'm going back a, a week in my mind. Minus seven. My dates are all messed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just minus seven days. But uh, that episode, because of football, the football enhanced the rookie blue. Um, it went up by 1.4, going up 56% from last week's series, series low in the 18 to 49 oh. division. And they got 5.76% million viewers very nice well, now i don't understand like how do they know how old these people are 
because it's they have the, the Nielsen boxes yeah. in their house, and yeah. so they know who has them and yeah. the ages of the people in the yeah, household. The demographics, yeah. Mm. So that's pretty good. That's yeah, awesome. that's really yeah. good. I want a Nielsen box like, in my house. Yeah, last week it was four point something num- million numbers, and this week, this past episode was five point seven six. Okay. Million views. That's really good. Good for rookie blue numbers. Yay. Up and up and up. Up and up. And that's all I have for news. All right. So, did you have no, predictions? <laughs> and now, you're after Buzz TV predictions. Luke is back next week. I Yay. saw him in there, and I'm excited for that. So, my prediction is I'm going to swing over Eric Johnson. <laughs> I want right. Luke's back. That's good. That's good. <laughs> While I swing over Peter Moody. <laughs> All right. um, I think, I don't know, I think that, like I said, I think that the whole Nick and Andy thing is going to continue for maybe the end of the season, but I still think that in the end, you know, Andy and Sam are going to end up together. I think that... Well, we see that Marlo goes completely crazy. Yeah. And I think that's just going to go. Which we predicted last week that she was going to go crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll definitely see that. We'll see some more tension within people's relationship. I think Gail and Holly, they're still going to make out and get it on. Oh, yeah. I want to see more celery. Like, the, the, <laughs> yeah. And I think celery's going to come back. Yeah. I was like, we haven't heard the last of celery. But I think everyone's relationship is still on the rocky Side. Everyone's a little rocky right now, but let but us people know. People rebounding to other people, and um, a huge shout out to Andy. I believe uh, she mentioned that Chloe might get shot, and I was looking like oh. all night <laughs> in this episode for it. It didn't happen. I got all worried about it, but it might happen in the future episodes. Wow, I hope I that doesn't know. happen. I don't know. I got worried. Um, so oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Way, to, way to end the show. Um, let <laughs> us know what you shot. guys think. Um, make sure you leave us comments on YouTube and iTunes. YouTube and iTunes. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the Tiana Hobson. And you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Anique Dufour and my website, AniqueDufour.com. And you can follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at Serafini TV. We'll see you guys next week. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.